Hi, this is Stephen Brower from Rant Valley Community College, and this is meant as an addendum to uh, the lecture on recursion. Um, a recursive method is one that calls itself. Um, when it calls itself, it usually does it, um, we're usually dealing with data of some type, whether it's a value or whether it's a structure. And um, we're starting off with a larger piece, and the idea is when we do a recursive call, we're taking a smaller piece, either a smaller value or a smaller piece of the structure. Um, so the recursive case is the part of the method that calls the method itself. The base case is the part of the method where the method will finish and it'll produce a value and it does not call itself in that final base case. Um, for when we solve problems, um, there are two well, two of the possible ways that they can be done is iteratively or recursively. Um, iteratively would be using a loop. Um, and um, and a, an advantage of that is that there would be less overhead. Um, the reason is in, in recursion, every time a method calls itself, there's a push onto the stack. So there's a little more memory that's, that's taken up. Um, there's a limit to how many times um, um, or the total number of stack calls or total number of method calls that you can have, you can end up with a stack overflow if it's done um, too many times. So the iterative approach um, has uh, less overhead in terms of memory um, that's used. Um, the disadvantage is depending on the problem, it may be more complicated to write it using iterative. Now, some problems tend themselves more to recursive approach. Some problems tend themselves more to iterative approach. And unfortunately, in a lecture like this, we may look at something and um, force recursion on it where iteratively might have been a way that you might have done it. Um, the big advantage of using recursion is um, the way in which it can be simply expressed. And we'll see in a moment with the, um, the classic example of the factorial that in a very small way, the problem can be defined, and then that can be implemented very easily in terms of the code. Um, the disadvantage of the recursion is the overhead that's involved. Um, so now a classic example, it's kind of like the whole world of recursion. This is a non-recursive uh, method. This is the iterative approach to factorial. Um, but the factorial, you know, five factorial is five times four times three times two times one. So doing this iteratively, um, we would loop, um, so if, suppose we're calling this with the value 5, then this loop would go 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 um, in terms of what the values of i would be, and it would be multiplying out the result to finally come up with the final result is. Um, in terms of, let's see if I can do this right, um, when this method is called, this is a piece of data that is uh, being created in terms of memory. This is a piece of data that is being uh, created in memory. And technically, this is a piece of data that's being created in memory. So this method here um, has three um, variables, three pieces of data that are being used for this. Um, but again, this is, this is an iterative approach to doing factorial. A recursive approach. Um, is, well, the idea is, I lost my mouse, um, is that if we think of 5 factorial as being, we can define it as like 5 times 4 factorial. Oh, man. Oh, this is painful for you guys to watch. Um, so 5 factorial can be defined as 5 times 4 factorial. That's supposed to be an equals here. It's And so that's this piece here. n factorial is defined as n times n minus 1 factorial. So it also means that we could redefine that 4 factorial as 4 times 3 factorial. Well, we need a stopping point. So if, if this here, in terms of the definition of the problem, if this is the recursive case, we need a base case to basically stop. And that's what this one here is, uh, the zero factorial. Um, this is the 
uh, the base case. So zero factorial will just return one, um, which means one factorial. One factorial is going to be one times zero factorial. So one factorial is one times zero factorial. Um, and then the zero factorial is um, is one. Um, so now, in terms of implementing this expression that we have here, um, and if you look, we are using this valid return. I'm doing this here just so that this method only has one return. Um, you may see if you pick up another book or if you Google this you may see that this would be as a return statement, this would be as a return statement. I'm just doing this so that when we have um, um, one uh, return at the end. Um, but in terms of the base case, so if the idea of the base case is that the method does not call itself, if we come in and the value of n is zero, okay, so we'll um, create int, uh, the value to return as an int, We'll check here if n is 0, which it is, the value to return is 1. It skips over the else, and then it just returns the value to return, which is returning 1. Um, so the base case is this piece right here, where it does not call itself. The recursive case, so the value to return, so if, if we're dealing with n, and this is supposed to be doing n factorial, this represents, well, the n factorial is n times factorial n minus 1. Um, and so this factorial is um, the method that is here. So the method is calling itself. That's the recursive case. And in a reducing manner, well, if we came in with n, we're calling ourselves now with n minus 1. That's the reducing part because it is smaller than um, than what we came in with. From a, um, a memory point of view, let me just um, oop, let's do it this way. From a memory point of view, for this method, for a single instance of this method, there's this variable there's this variable. So there are two variables that are that are explicitly being declared um, as part of this method. Well, every instance of this method is going to take up another two variables, meaning if we come in here with n is 5, um, and so since 5 is not 0, it will say the value to return is 5 times factorial 4, well, when this call takes place, factorial 4, it's going to have to then create another instance of this method, which will have its own instance of n and its own instance of value to return. Um, so in terms of the overhead that factorial or that a recursive method has, it would be whatever variables are declared, then there would be new instances of those variables as it runs. Um, now this here is, is from the Tony Gaddis book, um, and it, it's illustrating then this um, factorial method. I lost. Now you guys can probably see it. I'm not seeing. I only see a little dot, which I can't see the dot. Well, there's the dot. I'm, I'm sorry about that. Um, this really is emulating what would happen in the classroom. <laughs> okay. So um, now here this is using with n is four. So the very first time that this method is called, if 4 was passed, so it would come in here, if n was 4, um, it would say, well, 4 is not 0, so it comes to this point. The value to return is going to be 4 times factorial 3. So this part right here, that 4 times factorial 3, um, that's inside this instance of factorial. It is going to have to go and evaluate this expression to come up with a value. Well, to evaluate this expression, it has to do this call, factorial 3, which will create another instance of the uh, method. So here's another instance of the method. So now, 
again, think of it as, as there's another memory space that's created that has its own copy of n, its own copy of val to return. The n coming in um, to this one is the value 3. I'm sorry, is the value 3. Um, and so if we come with the value 3, if 3 is not 0, so it comes down here, um, 3 times factorial 2, so that's what this is representing, 3 times factorial 2, it's now going to have to call another instance of the factorial method. So what this slide is trying to show is like at this point in time, there are now three instances of this method here in, uh, in, in memory. Um, and so on this third one, when n is 2, so coming in with n is 2, it comes down here 2 times factorial 1, 2 times factorial 1, it calls the factorial method, so there's another instance of the method. When n is 1, we're still coming down to here, 1 times factorial 0, well, it is making that call. Um, and so we have another instance of the um, factorial method. Um, and so when n is 0, so if n were coming at 0, we get to this point, the value to return is 1. So what will happen is, so value to return is 1, it skips over the else, the value to return is 1. So that means that the value of this, which remember it's the factorial zero that called this, the value of this is now becoming one. So this one is coming up here. Sorry, one is going to be the value of factorial zero. And so now this um, instance of the method is going to be doing, so remember we were, when we were in that method, we were on this part right here. Um, so the 1 times factorial 0, well, factorial 0 is returning 1. 1 times 1 is 1. So 1 is the value that's being returned for factorial 1 here. So when n was 2, and we had 2 times factorial 1, well, factorial 1 had received the value 1. So 2 times 1 is 2. So this factorial 2 is returning the value 2 here. So this part right here, factorial 2, has the value 2. So this part here would have the value 2. So 3 times 2 is 6. So the 6 is being returned for factorial 3. Um, and so the 6 that's here for factorial 3, 4 times 6 is 24. Um, so the, the, um, the final value, um, so actually the initial call to factorial, this was the initial call to the factorial, and then the thing it will return is going to be the value 24. Now, what this slide um, doesn't do um, is showing the disappearing of these instances. So in other words, once this return value is done, this instance doesn't exist. Once this return value is done, this instance doesn't exist. Once this return value is done, this instance doesn't exist, um, etc. Oh, I'm at 13 minutes, and I have a cap of 15 for the software. I may have to pause before the next um, piece. But in the next exciting piece, we'll take a look at recursion and uh, data structures. Boy, I, can't, I cannot find my mouse. <laughs>